Uh, as I'm building it, th there's not a lot of rhyme or reason to the why, why I do what I do. I'm definitely the kind of person that just keeps turning the knobs till I'm happy, and uh, I, I don't even use the same plugins all the time. Like, I have certainly things that I go to a lot. Like, I'm a 90% in-the-box mixer. Um, you know, I'll kind of go to Metric Halo right away for drums, and um, I'll go to... Two bus is always the SSL compressor, um, but I'll. Uh, you know, I found once I started mixing in the box, I'm a really subtractive guy. Like I'll start tweaking. Like I don't even know what I'm. I I don't even know actually what I'm doing on these. So I might tell you that I'm doing something and open it up and have just lied right to your face and everybody's gonna know. But <laughs> like I tend to find since I've been mixing in the box here, that yeah, I was about to lie to your face. I was gonna say I was a subtractive EQ guy. Yeah, that's a little more like it. Uh, I found that ever since I started mixing in the box, like I, I would, it, the headroom becomes such an issue so quickly that I just morph. When I was an SSL guy, I would just grab the knob and start cranking high end, and low end, or whatever I wanted. And now that I'm in a box guy, the, generally speaking, the first thing I do is start dipping things, and to the point where I actually have to turn up the output of the EQ a lot of times at the end. Because I'll I'll do a lot of this like I'll do a I'll I'll dip find a frequency that would particularly was bothering me in the guitar that I felt was harsh and like messing up the whole mid range in the mix and then I'll come back on the other side and I'll I'll end up boosting like a wider frequency sometimes like like let's I didn't do it on this one but <laughs> quite often I'll end up coming up here like getting rid of a bunch of frequency and then going in the same area and widening like the exact same amount but getting so I don't lose the high end feel but still missed the kind of normal or uh, annoying frequency that was bothering me there's a lot of that going on and as far as the snares like splitting it um like one of these is probably distorted sounds like this one is so that's just like crushed with decapitator and then i probably one's just cut down to just snap And then what I call my fat snap, a little more bottom. It's usually really mid scooped, but then I end up filling in the mids with this one. And then I'll add the, the bottom end. And obviously, there's the the room mics going in with it too. Sometimes I'll actually do the same thing with the bass guitar. I'll like carve out a bunch of stuff and then end up filling it in with like a more compressed version of it on the other side. This particular track, like I mean, Mike kind of has is awesome. I mean, it's not even like just the fills and stuff that he did. He's really smooth. But I generally speaking, I'll do the same thing with like what I do with the snare. I'll split the bass on a couple tracks and maybe have one that's real bottomy and one that's real mid-rangey. This one just came out of the box sounding dynamite to me. I did a little dip on the mid-range and call it a day. Um, as I move on to this one, like I said, this one's kind of a work in progress. Um, I'm going to play you a little bit of a band called Sons of Texas, which was, um, they just released a single called Riverbed. Like, what, what was the name of this project again? Just there's no name as of right now. This is, uh, it's Mark Morton and uh, Friends. <laughs> Mark Morton and Friends, yeah. Huh? You did hear it here first. In fact, we got to, yeah, I might catch a little heat. It's okay. Um, yeah, the, 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 we did a, a whole bunch of songs, and some of them are in this realm, and some of them are not. But um, outside, then uh, the I'll play a little bit of Sons of Texas, which is go ahead. Sorry. Question: Since you mentioned that in SSL you tend to boost, do you notice now in digital you tend to do more high passes because sometimes the low frequencies go out of whack? I do. I do use a lot of decapitator, like sometimes even doing nothing to it. Like, I'll just put it on with the first, like, the A setting, which is their analog simulator. And 
I use that a lot. Like, I bet you'll see that on a lot of these tracks when I open it up. And sometimes it's just stock as it opens up with the A turned in, and sometimes I'll just roll the high end back. But, uh, yeah, I do. And then a lot of times I'll even drop an EQ after and then adjust the high end from there, which actually was the biggest thing I noticed about these speakers is how much they show me the, the cymbals in a, in a clean way. Almost I, I had to get used to it. In fact, I, I don't know how they're tweaked up in here. The SAM software, when you run it, you know, Gentle X Neutral is ultra hi-fi, super pristine. I don't operate like that. <laughs> like, I want to crank it, you know? I mix, I go from really quiet to really loud. It's just, like, I am spend, like, 90% of my day at a whisper, and when I'm done, I'm like, juice it. And just because of that, like, I actually, on, on mine, I tilt the high end down, but the, the SAM software sets it at the neutral, and then you can go in from there and, like, kind of tweak it to how you want to hear it.